Star Wars 7x7 episode 2082. So the Rise of Skywalker Visual Dictionary includes a number of little data file boxes labeled timelines that give dates of particular events in various characters and you know galaxies lives but they're spread out all over the book so I thought you know what let's just get it all in one place and talk about it and that's what we're gonna do today punch it Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode and uh, yes, the hat I am wearing if you're watching the video version of this is a Fireball whiskey hat actually, but I'm just going to go with it being Fireball for Team Fireball for Star Wars Resistance and we'll just say that's exactly what <laughs> it is. But we're not here to talk about Star Wars Resistance actually, though we are going to be talking about the Resistance because we're going to be talking about various timeline elements from the Rise of Skywalker Visual Dictionary, which will include the Resistance naturally. But as I mentioned at the top, there are little timeline boxes spread out all over the book. And there's also one very large one at the beginning that basically recasts the history of the galaxy as we know it. But instead of using the BBY and ABY nomenclature before the Battle of Yavin and after the Battle of Yavin, Pablo Hidalgo uses a BSI and ASI before Starkiller Incident and after Starkiller Incident timeline. But I thought, in addition to you know going through all these different elements and just collecting it all in one place, why not turn it into the before ABY and or before the Battle of Yavin and after the Battle of Yavin situation? So that way, if that's the way that you are used to experiencing it, then you, you know you'll be able to understand it a little more readily. So. That's what we're heading into today. So we'll start with Lando, who it turns out was around 78 years old at the time of the Rise of Skywalker. He was born in 43 BBY, approximately, they say. About 16 years later, Allegiant General Pride is born. You remember him? He's our new bad guy. And the timeline goes through all the stuff for, you know, Anakin Skywalker starts training and the Clone Wars and all this stuff. But... When it gets to 19 BBY, which is also 53 BSI, if you will, it says Darth Sidious begins diving into dark side arcana, including the hunt for immortality. And they also mention the Empire occupying Ilum, 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 the planet where all the Jedi younglings were getting their kyber crystals for their lightsabers and that they began their excavation program then. And it also says that R2-D2 joins the Royal House of Alderaan droid pool. Now, that one was kind of funny. I don't know why C-3PO wasn't also listed as joining that droid pool, but maybe he was not part of the Royal Alder Royal House of Alderaan droid pool. Maybe it was something else. Anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. And the last item that is a BBY situation is the birth of Snap Wexley. He was born in 11 BBY, so that means he was 46 years old at the time of the Rise of Skywalker. And then moving into the ABY space after the Battle of Yavin, Armitage Hux is born zero ABY, so basically that year, right? And he is illegitimate, by the way. That's the result of his father, Brendel Hux, cheating on his wife. Nice guy. Uh, we also have references to the Sith Eternal on Exegol and for ABY, and also the you know cult of Sith lovers also existing with Yupi Tashu and the Acolytes of the Beyond, and we were first introduced to those characters in the Aftermath novels by Chuck Wendig. From 5 ABY to 15 ABY, so a year after the Battle of Endor, starting there, and then that would be right after the end of the Battle of Jakku, as also chronicled in the Aftermath novel Empire's End, they refer to that in the book as the Taming of the Unknown. It says that surviving Imperial forces are met by secret reinforcements in uncharted space. Then also in 5 ABY, which was a very pivotal year, Luke began traveling the galaxy, accumulating fragmented force lore. Of course, Ben Solo was born that year, and Armitage Hux went off to the unknown regions with Dad. So for the record, that makes Armitage Hux five years older than Ben Solo, aka Kylo Ren. Then six years later, 
Finn is born to unknown parents, as it's described in the Visual Dictionary. So this would also make Finn 11 years younger than Armitage Hux and, oh, do the math, six years younger than Kylo Ren. Um, two years later in ABY 13, so this would be nine years after the Battle of Endor, Lando's daughter is born, and then sadly two years later, she's kidnapped. In fact, actually that year is significant in a number of ways. 15 ABY, which would be 11 years after the Battle of Endor. Rey is born, that's the year she's born. Also, that's the year that Luke begins training Ben, and Ben is 10 years old at this point. And Lando's daughter is two years old, and that's the year that she is kidnapped. Six years later, it's another momentous year in a way. That's 21 ABY, so that would be, what, 17 years after the Battle of Endor, so after Return of the Jedi. Uh, that's the year that Rey is abandoned on Jakku, and she is six years old when that happens. It's also the year that Luke starts investigating leads about Exegol, and also the year that he goes to Pisana with Lando Calrissian. Three years later, this will be 24 ABY, or 20 years after the Battle of Endor, after Return of the Jedi. So Rey is nine years old, and it says in the Visual Dictionary that her education in technology begins as she becomes one of Ankar Plutt's most reliable scavengers. And a couple of years later, this would be 27 ABY, Snap Wexley begins flying for the New Republic fleet. So if I'm doing the math again, that makes him 38 years old when he starts flying for the fleet. And then, once again, um, we have another significant year, 28 ABY, which would be also 24 years after the events of the Return of the Jedi. So that's when the novel Bloodline takes place. And that's also the year that the Jedi Temple destruction happens and when Luke goes off to Octo and begins his hermitage. Like, that's the official year for that. Also, that happens to be the year that Supreme Leader Snoke gives Allegiant General Pride command of the Steadfast, which is the Star Destroyer that, well, first of all, there was a Steadfast at the Battle of Jakku, and it was destroyed there, and Pride was on that one, but escaped, obviously. And so in uh, this time, which is six years also before The Force Awakens, Snoke gives Pride command of a new Star Destroyer, which is called the Steadfast, and for the record, that becomes Kylo Ren's flagship once the supremacy is destroyed and Kylo Ren becomes supreme leader. He takes the Steadfast on as his flagship. Then we have in 29 ABY, which is also uh, five years before the events of The Force Awakens, that's when worlds start seceding from the Republic and allying themselves with the First Order. So there's actually a political movement that begins five years before The Force Awakens where there is now public sentiment supporting the First Order, even though they are still not authorized to be doing you know, any sort of military buildup or anything like that. Um, it's that year also that Snap Wexley joins the Resistance and R2-D2 enters his low power mode. But running back quickly to Snap Wexley, so the Resistance started in 28 ABY and it's a year later that Snap joins and at that point in the timeline, it says in the Visual Dictionary that the Resistance is up and running. So she's been recruiting for the Resistance, General Leia has, and once it is fully up and running, about a year later, that's when she starts actively searching for Luke's whereabouts. And then four years before The Force Awakens, which would be 30 ABY, that's the year that Armitage Hux engineers the death of his father, Brendel Hux. That has to do with events that were discussed and revealed in the novel Phasma, or at least a Alluded to in the novel Phasma by Delilah Dawson. And that pretty much covers the timeline stuff that we're going to discuss, except for one particular character who has not been mentioned and for whom we get a lot of timeline stuff, actually. And so I thought we would run that character stuff down all in one shot. And I'll do that after the break. Stay tuned. 
Hey Rebel Razor, I've made some changes to the asteroid belt level at patreon.com slash SW7X7 and they are all with sponsors in mind. So if you want to get the word out about your business, your product, your service to a dedicated Star Wars audience, then please check out patreon.com slash SW7X7 and look for the asteroid belt level for details. Again, that's patreon.com slash SW7X7. Welcome back. So if you haven't guessed by now, the character that we haven't yet talked about is Poe Dameron. And so here you go. Here's everything you need to know about Poe. He was born in 2 ABY. So he was born in between the events of Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back. Death Star Baby, perhaps? Hmm? Uh, he started learning to fly at age 6. So that would be 8 ABY. And... Sadly, his mother passes away two years later, so that would be 10 ABY, Shara Bay dies. And later on, at age 16, that's when Poe leaves home and joins the Spice Runners. That is 18 ABY, or 14 years after the Battle of Endor, if you prefer. He's with the Spice Runners for five years, apparently. It says that age 21, he returns home, so that would be 23 ABY. And then a few years later, at 27 ABY, he joins the New Republic Academy. So he joins the Academy to become a pilot with the New Republic. That happens, uh, again, let me do the math, four years after he returns home from being a spice runner. And he's in the Academy for three years before he finally starts flying for the New Republic fleet. And he's assigned BB-8 as the droid to work with him while he is in the fleet. That is in 30 ABY, so that's four years before the events of The Force Awakens. And then he joins the Resistance. He is recruited by Leia three years before the events of The Force Awakens in 31 ABY. And so there you go. All of the fun timeline facts that you would like to know about the rise of Skywalker and related events and characters, all in one nice, neat episode. And that, in fact, is going to do it for this episode. So thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the galaxy you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2020 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.